What we've been exploring in class is how useful 10 as a number is. If we arrange our beads in groups of 10, it's very easy to see how many there are. And if we make up groups of 10, it helps us do our addition a lot more easily. So let's just remind ourselves. If, for example, we have a look here and we see how many of these pink, want to know how many pink beads there are. At the moment, it's very difficult to, but if we just arrange it very nicely in our little groups of five and five to make ten, so here one, two, three, four, five, and then I put another lot below it, then I can see, okay, I've got ten, that makes it very nice and easy to see there is my first ten. Now I try and make another ten, so I go a five and I try and got a five now I've got to do another five below but they're not enough okay but now I can see it very easily I've got a ten I've got a ten here and six here so I can I know immediately that what I've got over there is 16 and similarly if I arrange the blues in a similar way try and make that five and five oh, there's the five can't make a full other five but I can see now very easily what I have over there is a seven now, if I want to add those two together, what we were saying in class we can do is to say, look, I've got a 10 and I've got 6, which isn't a complete 10. But I know, what do I need to go with a 6 to make it a complete 10? I need 4 more to make it a complete 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull 4 more from over here. Now I know I've got a complete 10. And so what do I have? I've got 10. 20, 23, right? So I know my answer is 23. What have I done? I've taken the 16 and I've taken from that 7, I've taken 4 to make up the 20. And if I take 4 out of the 7, I know I've got 3 left. And so I'll have 20 plus 3, which is 23. So that's what we've been playing around with with our beads. And it's a very nice way and we can get quite quick at it. Um, helping us to add. Okay, so we're now going to do a whole lot of our more sums using this idea of completing the 10 and then seeing what is left over. And we're going to do it on the number line. So really what we're going to do on the number line is exactly the same idea. We're going to say, look, here we are at 46 and we want to add on 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete to the nearest 10 and then we're going to put on whatever is left over. All right, so we know the first thing we're aiming at is that 50 and we've practiced our bonds to 10. So we know that to go from 46 and we jump to 50, we've jumped four steps. So we've taken four of, out of that seven. How much is left? It's another little three steps we must bounce. And we know very well that if we bounce from 50 up three steps, we'll get to 53. So we can do this very easily. Let's try another one. If we are at 58 and we need to go up five steps, we're first going to bounce to our nearest multiple of 10 and we know that that is 60 that we're aiming at so we make we know our bonds to 10 very well so we know we jump 58 to 60 that's a jump of two so out of the five we've already done two steps we've got three more to do and we know if we go from 60 and a jump of three we're going to end up at 63 so our answer is 63. Okay, try these two for yourself now. Pause the video, try them, and then we'll go over them together. You have a number line in your homework book that you can use to do this on. Okay, so first one, start at 48. We're going to jump up. We need to go up by three. First jump is to 50, which is a jump of two. And we've got one more to do, and so we're going to end up at 51. For 59 plus 4, we start at 59. We jump to 60. Well, that's not much of a jump. It's just 1. We've got then 3 left to make a 4. So we take a jump of 3 and we end up at 63.